Hello. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate uh, a technique I came up with for uh, uh, determining what's the breakdown side of a patient at each and every visit. It's quick, it's easy and effective. You can do it at the beginning of each and every visit. So in case the breakdown side of a patient changes at some point, you don't miss it and go with the wrong side and, and end up with fine these symptoms for pain and stuff. Uh, you might say we have the stretch test. Why care? So the stretch test is uh, very good for most patients, but not good for some patients. So you have many patients that uh, you stretch test them and the changes are very obvious. One side they get clear, they get increased speed, you feel fine, you go the other side, they're fuzzy, they're jerk. They're... But some patients are completely non-sensitive, they feel nothing. Um, there are no, uh, not very observable changes might not be an experienced observer, but I hear many other people have the same issue, not being sure about the breakdown side of a patient. So having some patients that are very clear and I knew what the breakdown side was, I thought what if the stretch test, that is the golden standard, makes some other changes as well, make some changes that are objective, easy to see, easy to measure. And I found out that it does and they're very predictable, re reliable, and easy to do, easy to find. So here they are, they, they were a lifesaver for me. Please give them a try and see how, if they hold true for you as well. So the first thing that the stretch test affects is the flexion and extension of the neck meningeal test. So you do the flexion and sink test, you do extension and sink test, and see how level it is, okay? And then you stretch test the one, the one side and retest and then stretch test the other side and retest and when you stretch test out the correct breakdown side you'll find out that the test becomes more level when you stretch test the other side it becomes more positive regardless which thumb drops it's more positive so I was using this for some time as the uh, as an uh, additive to the original stress test and it was very good for me. But I, I then um, came up with another thing that it's uh, also a good augmentation for this. Uh, let me just clarify for the flexion extension. This only works for the first time. So if you stretch test at the correct breakdown side and you sync test and you find out that it's level now, if you do the flexion and extension a second time, this time you might get a drop. In which case, of course, you will want to do the uh, relative meningeal release. Okay. So the other test is the C7 test. Many of you might know that if you touch C7 and sync test, the thumb that drops is usually the breakdown side. Usually, but not always. So I found out that if you combine this with the stretch test, you can get it to be always correct. So let's say you touch C7 and you sync test and you get the right thumb drop. So your patient most likely is a right. So if you do a left side stretch it, and you recheck, might stay on the right, but in some cases might change, go to the left. These are the cases we missed on the original testing. Might have been a compensation or something, but if you stretch test the other side and it does change, that's the breakdown side of the patient. If you do the left side stretch and it stays on the wrong si right side, that's the breakdown side of the patient. Okay, that's it. But I came up with a few augmentations for this because sometimes you touch a seven and you don't get a drop. It's a negative or it's, a, it's, it's hard to see. So I found out a few other tests that work exactly the same way. So when the right thumb drops in C7, the same thumb drops in this test. Which are these tests? First is the lateral head flexion. So uh, you, you grab the patient's head, you can touch in this test. I found out it doesn't make any difference. You can grab the patient's head and side bend to the one side, side bend to the right side, uh, side bend first side, side, sync test, side bend to the other side, sync test. And you notice which thumb drops down. And if, if this isn't clear as well, you can also rotate to the one side check, rotate the other side check, flexion of the head, check, extension, and check. So if you do this in this order, you always get the same side thumb drop. So if you do side bending, rotation, and then flexion, always get the same time. If you do it the original side, uh, ABC uh, way, flexion, extension, 
the rotation as you test for the meninges, you might get different th thumb drops. But if you first side bend, then the rest follow. So it's an augmentation of the C7. It makes it more easy to click, more easy to see. They all they are all at the same side, very easy to see. Okay, and then you stretch test to the other side and and see if this changes, if the other side changes, the the other uh, side thumb drops. Okay, so now. Let me quickly uh, tell you how I do this in every visit, and of course I combined with uh, the, the initial testing. I, I observe the patient, ask them how they feel and stuff, but here's how I do it. When the patient first comes in, first thing I check is C7. I cut C7 and see, and then sync test and see which thumb drops. If I get a definite thumb drop, that's it. I get my clue. Let's say it's a right thumb drop, so most likely this patient is a right. Okay. If I don't get a, a, a clear sign, I might also do lateral bending, rotation and flexion and check after each one so I make sure if it's right or left. Let's say it, all of this indicate, indicate right. Then I do uh, end of end, uh, inflection extension, I notice how positive it is. Okay. Then I do a left side stretch, the opposite side, left side stretch test. Okay. I get the patient up, of course you, you can observe if they get up quickly and how they move, but first thing to do is flexion, sync test, extension of the neck and sync test and see if it's more positive or more equal. Usually it will be more positive because the original testing was correct, you stretch test to the wrong side and it's more positive. And you touch C7 and you do the other testing and they will still be on the original side, this time right side. Okay, you go to your breakdown side, it's right. You can always ask the patient to walk up and down and see how they feel after that, if they walk steady and if they're fuzzy and clicked and, and so, but these are objective signs, okay. Of course, after that, you have to do stretch test the other side because you, I always like to finish with a stretch test on the correct side. It makes things easier on, uh, for, for the rest of the protocol. But let's see what happens in some cases. So in some cases, after the original testing, when I do the left side stretch and I do a flexion and extension uh, of the neck and sync test, this time will be even. And if I then touch C7, the left thumb will drop. These are the cases we miss, okay? If I don't get clear, clear reading, of course, I can do lateral flexion and check rotation and check or flexion extension and check. When I get a clear reading, I stop. Okay, this, these are the cases that are left breakdown side. So you might want to do also a right side stretch to see if all these things change. Usually they won't. Some cases might. So in these cases, I go up and down a couple of times until they stabilize on one side. That's a breakdown side. Okay, but usually they stabilize in the first time. First time they change, they stay there. Okay. That's it. Please tell me what you think. I would like love your feedback, but these tests have been a lifesaver for me. Thanks for watching.